Welcome back to Excel HQ, everyone. Today we will be going over the take and the drop dynamic functions. The take function basically takes a specified amount from an array that you outline, and the drop function just drops off a specified amount from an array that you outline. And I'll show you what you mean right now. So I'll start off with equals take, and then I'll specify my array and the amount of rows I have. My array and the amount of rows I have are the required elements with the take and the drop function, and then columns is optional. So I'm going to specify my array by highlighting my headers of my table of my example data over here. And then if I go control space, it will highlight all of the data for me right away. Now the rows I want in this case are just going to be the first row, just to show you an example. And it's just going to take the first row, which is my headers. You can include your headers or you can't include your headers. It's just whatever you want, it's personal preference, but just see whether you want to include them in your array or not. If I go back to my rows and pick my first 10 rows, it's gonna go all the way down to USA, which is right about here. Now, what you can also do with this is you could go negative. Now it's gonna take the last 10 rows. So my last rows end with three Germanys. If I scroll all the way down, I have three Germanys at the very bottom and it works its way back up. The other option you have is specifying the amount of columns you have. If I go one here, what it should do is it should only take the date side and it does only take the date side. It's very unfortunate that it doesn't take the formatting along with it in this case, since this is formatted and not just text. However, you can do format painter and you can just paint it if you want. And then these are all the dates that are that it is for the last 10. I'm just gonna keep it at numbers right now for simplicity. Now, if I go back in here and I take say four of these, it's going to take everything except my order quantity. You can also go a negative four. It's going to take everything except my date now. And that's how the take function essentially works. And the drop function works almost the exact same way. If I go drop here, I'm also going to take the same array I had last time. However, when I specify my rows this time, I'm including the ones that I want to not take instead of take. So if I just do one, in the last example, we took just the header. Now it's gonna take the whole array, but except for the header. So there we go, we start at Canada, and that's our very first country, and it's ignoring the header entirely. You can go negative, once again, to take off the last row. And it can also go, let's say, 94. If I go negative 94, it's gonna give me my top five rows. If I go to my columns this time, Last time, if I put in a one, it gave me just the date. If I put in a one this time, it's gonna drop off just the date and it's gonna start at order. I can also work my way with a negative with that as well. I wanna just drop off the order quantity and then you can make it however many rows or columns you want. It just doesn't need to be one. It could also be say three. And then I just have my date and order number. I don't know what good that does, but you know, that's what I get. And the great thing about drop and take as well is if there's a lot of times when you're using Excel and you need running averages or like the top five of a large table or the bottom five, the great thing about drop and take is that it is dynamic. If the table changes, the array changes as well. So right now I'm taking, I'm dropping off the last 94. I'm just going to uninclude my, my columns here. If I go to the very top here and I insert a column, it's also going to recognize that in the array as well, zero, 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 zero. And then I could just make up some numbers here, or I could just put the country here and it automatically fills out my order number and country in here. And that's the great part of it being a dynamic array is that it's constantly changing and updating. Another great part about these functions is that you can combine them with other functions such as average or sort or filter. So for example, here, I'm dropping off my first or my last 94 rows. Let's say I only want order quantity. I'm going to enter in a four there, but then I want the average of my top five order quantity. So what I could do here is I could just put average in front. And then when it's going to average out, it's going to average out what I filter out with my drop function. So then that's the average of the top five rows that I have for order quantity. If I want an average of the, the top five orders. I could also put sort in there as well to sort my orders, or I can also sort it from here, largest to smallest. If I redo how this is done, well, my first five are all 10. So then I'll have 10 there. I can go back into my H2 here, my average, and then instead of dropping off 94, I'll drop off 50. 
what it's the average of my top 50 orders when sorted, 8.4, not too shabby. And that's basically some great ways you can use the drop and take function. If you learned anything from this video, make sure to drop a like and comment down below if there's anything you would like to see in the future.